the ZX10 Masters Cup action is proudly brought to you by Red Square for ultimate activation. And welcome to SWAT Corps Raceway. It is the penultimate round of the 2019 Red Square Kawasaki ZX10 Masters Cup Championship. And it's all going down to the wire. Graham from Ida, he's got one hand and four fingers on that number one plate heading into 2020. Watch out for Yaku Kosa. He's up, out there to upset the apple cart. Michael Schmidt as well, looking to put himself on the podium. Don't count out the old Wiley contenders like Johan LaRue, John T. Collard in the mix, Teddy Brook. Gareth Jackson and Ian Hardwood. The Bridgestone tyres have been fitted to all the machines. They run the same Bridgestone R11 race rubber and the riders head out on track. Very similar Kawasaki ZX-10R machines. Some old, some new, but about to line up on the grid for the second and final time of the 2019 season. Can Graham from Redar put two hands on that trophy? Joining me, as always, is Dave Peterson. And Dave, coming to the final stages now. Oh, someone's heading into pit lane there. Not too sure who that is, but Dave, it's been such an exciting championship. It's coming to the boiling point now. Can Graham from Redar make it another title? Well, he only has to score a first place here, and basically he's wrapped it up. And uh, judging by the way he's been going in practice, I think Graham from Barar is going to be the man to beat here. A punter going up as he's pulled into the pit lane, so I think Stewie Christie and a punter have gone into pit lane at the start of the race. Not really sure what's going on there. They're also checking out the surface of the track, just finding out from your Humphrey there if everything's okay. Graham from Barar's got his opinion. They're saying, yeah, there's a bit of oil down, but we can see it. They put cement down. John T. Collard will be looking for a good one today. And so will Johan Leroux with that Isle of Man TT crash on it. Yeah, he always throws his name into the hat here at Swat Cups Raceway. That's how it all lines up then. Join us after the break for Race 1 Action. Welcome back to SWAT Corps Raceway and the tension is starting to build here. The penultimate round of what has been another exciting championship in the Red Square ZX10 Masters Cup. On the starting line, Graham from Idar is the man looking to turn that 41 into a number one. Yaku Kos has got to try and stop him. Look out for Michael Schmidt, Johan Leroux, John Ticola, Teddy Brook, Gareth Jackson up in the mix and it's off the line into turn one. Can from Idar get that whole shot? Yes, he does. And right behind him, Yaku Kos and Michael Smith. There's Ian Harwood on the brightly coloured Bridgestone bike. Great start from Howard. He's been having a few problems with his bike during the day. Yeah, but he's going to have a nosebleed being that high up. Look out oh. for a top 10 finish. All the riders sorting Jackson. themselves out. Ruben Olbenhauser Alm also right in the mix as we go on board with Johan Leroux. He loves coming to SWAT Corps. He's going to put himself in the mix for that top five. He's right on the tailpiece there of John T. Collard. He goes to that Johan Leroux line. Never mind the cement dust there. You can see the riders some opting the outside line, some opting the inside line. They're hang scaling up to turn number five. Now, is it still from Rida at the front end? Yes, it is. That's exactly where he needs to be if he wants to wrap up. He second Red Square ZX10 Masters Cup title. Johan Leroux a little bit wide. Those Bridgestones did very well to keep him in check. Ian Howard in that good dice there. He's involved with Lafraz Fritz. Gareth Jackson right there on the red bike as well. Hing Scaling just behind them. And Carl Rohrbeck on bike number 36 as we come down to that final turn. Where is he going? Ian Hardwood? And he's on the Ian Hardwood line, the Bridgestone loving the grip that he's getting out of those tyres and you can see he's actually getting held up a little bit, he's trying to make inroads to the front end of this field as we go on board here with Michael Smith, beautiful shot of that big fat tyre at the back end of Yaku Kos, brilliant drive there from Kos, he closes onto the back end of From Ridar, so Kos knows he's got to finish ahead of the Stefan Udi Stocks Kawasaki machine if he's to have any chance at uh, clawing this championship away from From Ridar. 
Tricky conditions. You can see the stripe on the track there. So that's what's keeping the guys all bunched up like this because they're having to be very careful where they go around. We're on board of Yaku Khos. Up on the brakes and Yaku Khos hits the front for the first time in this race. Brilliant move. There we go. First gear, back brake stop. And here comes Michael Schmidt. So this is exactly what Yaku Khos will want. He'll want to put him, that Michael Schmidt in between himself and from Radar. Like you said, the track conditions, the riders just sorting themselves out. That's what's making it so nice and bunched up. John T. Collard riding the mix. So too is Johan LaRue. Michael oh, Schmidt, Schmidt on the inside. And this is exactly going to script for Yaku Khos. Not so much for from Radar. Michael Schmidt, how did he do that on the brake? So late there. So much confidence on the front end. Graham from it all. Well, as we said, he's got a championship to think about. The other riders, there, John T. Collard, going around the outside of Graham from it all. They've got nothing to lose. Collard has got his head down and chasing hard. Yeah, it looks like from Radar's in the frame of mind. He's not too comfortable with track conditions. He's just going to circulate, get as many points as he can in this race and attack in race number two. Bike 28, that was Lafarge Fritz. It's been a brilliant introduction to a full season of Red Squares at X10 Masters Cup for that man. And once again, up there in the top 15. And on board here with Sophie so Tembo. Can't get any brighter coloured leathers than that, Rob. But they look brilliant. Well done, Safiso. Full factory rider there from Sabisa Temba. Another rider improving. Just needs to sort out one or two gremlins on his bike. And he'll be up in the mix with these riders. Look at Michael Smith challenging Yaku Coast now. So I said it was going to script. Maybe not so much like this. Yaku Coast will tell Michael Smith, just sit behind me. I need these 25 points. It's a good battle. Ian Harwood, Hengskain and Ruin Olberhauser, Cole Robeck, Clifford Ogle just behind them. That is for the top 10, the final top 10 positions. John T. Collard and JLR, Johan Leroux, are having a ding-dong battle. I've lost a few bike lengths on that lap as they came out of the hairpin. We're on board with Johan Leroux. You can see John T. just ahead of them. Listen to this bike scream as they come up to that fabulous turn number four, the fastest corner on the track. Now, Yaku Coast doesn't seem too phased by track conditions. He just slams that front end right across the cement. Does from Radar is definitely the rider taking it easy. Ian Harwood, he's up inside a top 10. Brilliant ride there from him. A little bit further back. Park number 36 in a good dice. Cole Robeck, he's got Ruin Alberhauser, Clifford Ogle, Lafroche Fritz, and Safiso Temba just behind him. So we've got really good battles. We've got a seesaw effect here at the front end. We've got what is a five way, six way battle at the front. Fram from Radar doing everything he can to hold on to that podium. John T. Collard, he can sniff that podium. So from Radar, it's got to start concentrating on front because the pressure's coming from behind. On board with Michael Smith, go down to turn two, and he sneaks up on the inside of Yaku Coast. We've got a brand new leader in this race, Michael Smith. We could see that coming, Rob. He seemed to have that pace on the brakes ahead of uh, Yaku Coast. Like you said, Dave, he's got nothing to lose. He's coming to this race. He's not too phased with the track oh. conditions. Ian Harwood going around the outside of Hing Scaling. So he's another rider that doesn't seem too fussed with conditions. Ruin Olberhauser, Cole Robeck, there in the mix there. That is at mid-pack dice, Safiso Temba. He's clawed back a couple of tents, and he's right on the mix there. Johan Leroux! Oh. oh, where did he come from to make the move? Is he going to get it stopped? Yes, he does. Exceptional riding once again from Johan Leroux. What does he take? I've seen him take Panados before. I want to know what kind of Panados that, he, that he's taking. From a very special chemist, he's getting those. <laughs> now, John T. Collard will be wanting to fight back. Harwood has pulled just a little bit away now then from Hing Scaling, leaving that dice behind him. He'll be looking up the road to see who else he can catch in this race. Graham from Adar still holding station there in third place. He'll know it's not enough to wrap up the title in race number one, but it's enough points to do it in race number two. Ian Harwood looking on the inside. This is a good battle going on between Ian and Hing Scaling for what is about eighth and ninth place at the moment. So big points and big honours up in the various classes and categories that we've got in this race. Up there, Lafrage Fritz onto the front straight. He's in a good battle and trying to hold down that top 15. Uh, Hing Scaling coming back at Ian Hardwood during the end of that lap. So this is a great dice further down the field. But out front, Ooh. Michael Smith. And looking over his shoulder is John T. Collard just behind him. Teddy Brook as well. A lonely ride there for Teddy Brook in sixth place. If he looks behind him, you'll see a gaggle of Red Square ZX10 Cup riders. Here they come up to turn number five. Is Ian Hardwood lining up a move on the inside of Hing Scaling? Is he going to get close enough? We go on board with a new factory-looking Safiso Temba down into second gear. You'll get on the acceleration very gently here. It's so easy to high side yourself, standing up the bike beautifully there. Very action style, riding style there from Sophie Sotemba on board now. You can see bike 69, Hank Scaling, flicking it left, short shifts third gear into the final turn of the Swatcom track. Ian Hardwell will be looking for an overtake as they come into the final turn. No, 
Can't do it there, but he runs up the inside. He's going to get better drive. So this is all planned. Ian Howard looks like he's going to try and make a move as they come down into turn number one. And he goes up on the inside. Unbelievable. Just up the road from him is Gareth Jackson. So Hank Scaling drops another place. Him and Howard swapping positions all the time. But this time, looks like Howard's made it stick. That's a very play, brave place to do it as well. Ian Howard on the inside. Gets himself up into eighth place. Hank Scaling, check out that Knight Rider dash. Just screaming all over the place. Meanwhile, look who's still out front, Michael Smith, nothing to lose, he's still holding off Yakukos and Graham from Adar, your two top title contenders, so Yakukos, he does not need this, he needs to get in front of bike number 49, so it's 49, 43, 41, 44, your top four riders. Yakukos is keeping an eye here, he's very good at the top of the hill, that's where he's going to make his move on Michael Smith, Smith seems better down into turn one, talking about one, did you see the one there, there's Henny the flag holding out the last lap board. So we're on the last lap of this race. Oh, bit of a slide there going from John D. Collard as well as we head into that last lap. Oh, good luck trying to pass your Hunt LaRue on this last lap. John D. Collard, you are not going to do that. He has that massive battle in Harwood. Just ahead of them is Gareth Jackson on the inside. Ron Olbers are trying to make that move. Can't make it stick. Cole Robex in the mix there as well. The pit boards come out. Plus one. That is the gap between the two riders. A little bit further back, that's here. Hank Scaling. You can see right on his tail. Is this going to be a move on the inside by bike number 34? Ruan Olberhausen. No, Hank Scaling just closes that line, does not al allow him through. On board of Sofiso oh! Tembo. Sofiso Tembo, turn number two, has lost the front end and the bike is lying in the grass. We're on the last lap, so we're going to follow the leaders. Hopefully, Sofiso is going to be okay. And the bike. And look at Graham from Barad now looking to go into second position. Uh, back out on track, we have got the Panaganapathy, so he's come back out on track, but right at the back of the field. Here's our leader, Michael Smith, right behind him, Michael Coast. And right there is Graham from Barra. Will he make a move on the last corner? I don't think so, Dave. I think he's got championship on the mind. It's going to be very risky. He's going to settle. Looks like our top three are going to settle as they were. It's going to be Michael Smith. This is going to be an awesome ride from the man. He loves coming to SWAT Corps and just proving once again that he's going to be a top contender heading into 2020. He comes across the line, and in the official results, it is that man, Michael Smith, just ahead of Yakukos. Graham from Riddell, Johan Leroux with another top five finish, ahead of John T. Collard, Teddy Brook, Gareth Jackson, and Ian Harwood, up there in eighth place. Brilliant ride from the TRP Bridgestone man. Let's go to Pitts then and catch up with your first time winner in the Red Square ZX10 Masters Cup, it's Michael Smith. The race was quite hard. Um, I must say, um, the track wasn't at its best, but it was the same for all, so I'm definitely going to take this win. Um, I really actually felt good the whole weekend already. Um, I just want to thank a few guys, Team Fish Curry, my father-in-law, my dad was here today, and this is for my son. Um, he's been waiting for me to win one, so um, I'm glad to give it to, this win to him. Thanks a lot. Welcome back to a sunny and windy SWAT Cops Raceway for race number two of the Red Square ZX10 Masters Cup. We've seen an almighty battle in race number one. The fans have come out and once again witnessed world-class motorcycle racing here at the Extreme Festival of Motorsport. Our ZX10 Cup riders lining up on the grid then for the second and final time here today at SWAT Cops Raceway. Can Graham from Idar turn that number 41 into a number one plate? There you go, the red lights come on. They'll go off from Idar looking to get the whole shot again on the limiter. And it's been a brilliant start there. John T. Collard with a good start from row number two, but it does look like from Idar, Michael Schmidt, and Yaku Coast, the top three riders. Down into turn number two, Graham from Barra will hold them off. The track's a lot cleaner this time around, so I think the lap times are going to be a lot faster. Oh, who's that going on the outside? It's uh, Jackson up front there, and then behind him, Carl Robeck going very wide into turn number two. Good to see Stewie Christie's made it back out on track and the Pananganapathy. So they've sorted out those problems on their machines from race number one. And right up in the mix, there's Hank Scaling, a Pananganapathy just behind him. So another good start this from Hank Scaling at the top of the hill from Ridar. Track conditions a lot better than they were in race number one. So he's going to try and check out at the front. Yakukos sitting in third place is the man with all the work to do. A couple of riders going a little bit wide at the top of the hill. Johan Leroux, also another brilliant start up in the mix. Ian Harwood was the biggest loser from that start. He's dropped about four or five places down now outside the top 10. John T. Collard comes through that final corner on the Papa's Pizza's Ovens Kawasaki. Good drive down into turn number one. Right behind him, Teddy Brook better start this time as well. He's on the tail of Johan LaRue. 
Let's just have a look out front and as we go on board here into turn number two, Johan Leroux, there he is chasing down John T. Collard, those two battled it out hard in race number one, Johan Leroux getting the better of Collard there, so at the moment it is John T. Collard out front ahead of Johan Leroux, but watch out for the battle for fourth place, top three just extending now, you can see from Radar has pulled the hammer down, he doesn't want to get involved in any kind of confrontation with Michael Smith looking for that double win, he wants to just pull away from Yakukos and wrap this title up here at the penultimate round. Just looking at the points board, if it stays like this right now, Graham Frambradar will be the 2019 Red Square ZX10 Masters Cup champion. On board with Yaku Khos. Great shot of Khos. Bike number 43 as he heads down to that final turn. Yeah, you can see how much work these riders have to do. Standing on those pegs, changing direction left to right. Really is a physically and mentally demanding circuit Yeah, at Swatkops Raceway. And that's what makes Johan Leroux's ride so much more impressive because at 60 whatever years of age, he's still able to mix it with some of our younger statesmen at the front end. Just to go through the Class C riders, those are the masters, don't forget. Johan Leroux is leading that at the moment. Teddy Brooks, also a Class C rider, as is Hank Scaling and Carl Rohrbeck. So there's a lot of opposition in that category and Sui Christie at the moment looks like he might be catching a punter. Yeah, it's the perfect category to let these older statesmen come and race competitively and obviously in a safe environment. Really has been a great addition to the Extreme Festival of Motoring as we go to the top of the hill now. Turn number five. Once again, you can see three or four riders abreast in that mid-pack dice from Rodado. He's just churning out those lap times. The only rider to dip into the 104s for now. Although it looks like Michael Smith and Yaku Kos is now closing that gap down. So our top three have pulled away. It's a battle for fourth place between Johan Leroux and John T. Collard. There it is going into turn one. Again, Teddy Stuck there in no man's land in sixth place, but a Panaganapathy now making his way through up into seventh. Looks to me like Yaku Khos is going to try and make a plan. Now, don't forget, he's a lot quicker at the top of the hill. That's where he's doing all of his outbreaking. So, are we lining something up right now? Because this is going to be interesting how Yaku Khos handles Michael Smith at the top of the hill. He's got to get the drive coming out of turn number four. You can see just bouncing all over the place there. He does look like he's got really good drive. That might be a little bit too far back. From Rida, hard on the anchors. Look Whoa. at that fairing onto the front mudguard. Putting a lot of pressure on the front end of that Bridgestone R11 tyre. Just behind him, Michael Smith. Different riding styles you can see there. From Rida, old GP style sitting upright. Bit more Kevin Schwan style there from Michael Schmidt. And a bit more new school from Yakuko. Super Motard style there from the former Motard racer. Doing everything he can. Stewie Christie in a good little battle there with Aubrey Marais. So much better ride this in the second heat from Aubrey Marais. I'll be rare, much faster this time around. I think maybe the conditions in the first race put him off a bit. There is a Panaganapathy though, leading out this group. Ian Harwood coming down the hill into the final turn. Nowhere near the top eight finish that he got in race number one. So he's got a lot of work to do. Again, just maybe suffering with those bike gremlins that he's had the last couple of rounds. On board, Jahing scanning. This is a beautiful shot of Ruin Albahazer looking to make up a move. That's probably one of the best places to do it. You come out of turn one, all kinds of out of shape. Goes Hank Scaling and Ruin Albahazer must be sick of hearing and seeing that ZX10 in front of him all kinds of out of shape and just bobbling all over the place. Looks like he's a difficult man to pass is our Hank Scaling. <laughs> There, Johan Leroux has got a head then of John DiCollard. We are on board here with Michael Smith. Looking for something on the brakes up on the inside. Yaku Khos, yes. Yaku Khos, that's where we said he would do it, Rob, and he's made it stick this time around. Yeah, he came from a long way back, and Schmidt looked like he outbroke himself a little bit, couldn't turn it in while holding that front brake, and that just allowed Yaku Khos to make the move. Now, does Khos have enough time and pace to close down on these championship rival, Graham from Ridal? Because as it stands at the moment, from Ridal will be lifting that number one title. So he's got to try and step up. He's just put his fastest lap of the race, a 105.1. It's just not enough to close that gap. The big group behind a Panaganapathy is Chewie Christie. Ian Howard running up on the inside of the brakes of Carl Rohrbeck. Gareth Jackson also in there as well with the Morphine Racing Kawasaki. Behind them, Lefraz Fritz and Cliffy Ogle. Yeah, Cliffy Ogle just battling on that Suomi Africa uh, motorcycle there, not setting that bike up the way he wants to. So expect a little bit more there from Clifford Ogle as we go with From Radar to the top of the hill. Could this be the swan song? Could this be the perfect end to what has been a perfect season so far for From Radar? Beautiful hey. slow mo shot there of Collard. He has a look over his shoulder and says, how did this Johan Leroux once again get past me? I think he was checking to see where Teddy Brook was. <laughs> There's a Panagarapathy. He's four seconds behind him now with Stewie Christie in turn. Aubrey Marais. Great ride from Aubrey there on first digital bike. Gareth Jackson, Carl Robeck, they're having their dice as well. Jackson a bit further back this time around. A Pana. You can't miss him with that 
orange visor on the white crash helmet. You know, I love the riding style there of Stewie Christie. It never gets old. He gets that ZX10 all kinds of out of shape all the time. Not afraid at pushing the limits on that machine is the vet. As we come into the final stages of this race, now from Bredar out of turn one, you can see Yaku Close has certainly maintained, if anything, closed that gap ever so slightly. Michael Smith doesn't look like he's got the pace here now in race number two to pull off the double win on the day. So another podium finish there for him. But it's all about Yaku Close. From Bredar will start getting that gap coming down ever so slightly. He's got to apply that pressure. That's all that Yaku Close can do now. Just looking at the lap chart, they picked up half a second on From Bredar in that lap. So there's half a second. He's got him in his sights right now. Not going to make much difference to that championship title for Graham Fambara. But as we head into the final stages of this race, Fambara, I think he's a little bit in cruise mode. You can see there, not quite as hard on the front end as he was the previous laps. Yeah, he's just trying to smoothen it out maybe. Maybe he pushed so hard at the beginning, got a little bit too much heat in those tyres. And uh, Yaku Khos, I think this is just championship on the mind. Yeah, Khos is a very determined rider, lost so much weight as he gets high-sided almost into oblivion. But he really has come into the 2019 season a different kind of rider. Lost that weight, looking very fit and hungry 2020 is going to be another very exciting season there are our top three riders they've been added all day long they were added on friday as well during the practice sessions behind them just checking the lap charts does look like johan larue is holding off john de carlo on board here with michael smith late apex hard on the gas comes out of there second third short shift to fourth as they go through that frighteningly fast turn three now almost rear wheel steering it through there. That is Teddy Brook again, a lonely ride, but he is certainly closing down that gap on John T. Collard. So it could be a change up there between those. That bird will want to get out of the way because we have got the fastest Red Square ZX10 Masters in the land doing battle here in the final stages of this penultimate round. Khos is doing everything he possibly can. He really is pushing that machine as is Teddy Brook. That gap to John T. Collard is coming down now. So that's the battle for fifth and sixth place. Collard looks over his shoulder once again and what does he see? He sees the Brook refrigerator bike coming in in bike number 93 but out front it is going to be Graham from Bredar who's bringing this one home he's had a brilliant ride here today he knew he could do it first race didn't like the conditions thought let me just give it away a little bit we've got one lap to go you probably see any of the flag coming out with the last lap there he is last lap board is out so these riders will know that there's not long to go there's only these two and a half k's left of racing we're on board with Jan Leroux as he comes across the finish line he'll be in fourth position with that lap to go leading class here as well then we've got John T. Collard class A Teddy Brook right behind him the class C rider yeah, John Ticolo looks like he's just hit a brick wall. That's why he's looking over his shoulder so much. He's coming into the clutches now there of Teddy Brook. A Panaganapathy, a lonely seventh ride there, but he's ahead of Stewie Christie and Aubrey Murray up inside the top ten. Brilliant ride there. This is the battle a little bit further down. You can see still going on there. Hank scaling, holding off Ruin Alba. As he must be so, so peeved at not being able to get ahead of Hank scaling. Hank scaling has ridden a great race. Uh, don't forget he's also been taking part in the Bridgestone races as well, so he'll be pretty tired after this one. So last lap, from it all goes up the hill for the very last time at this track in 2019. And uh, this has been a superb performance from champion two years ago, don't forget. And last year he lost that championship. So now that number one plate will be back on the bike. Yeah, it's been a dominant year from Graham from Idar, but Yaku Kos has pushed him literally all the way down to the wire. Just didn't have enough in the tank here. From Idar is going to put another championship performance in here. And it is now officially two hands on that 2019 Red Square ZX10 Cup trophy. There he is, your 2019 championship winner, Graham from Idar, at the top of the monitor there in Stephanie Udi Stocks Kawasaki. It's Yaku Kos in second place, Michael Smith in third, Johan Leroux, John Ticola, Teddy Brook, Apanaganapathy, and Stewie Christie your top eight riders in race number two. Let's go down to the pits then and catch up with a very excited from Bredar. We're super happy to have won the championship today. We've still got another round to go in P. I was hoping to wrap it up in the first heat, but the track was not good condition after one of the cars blew up, so I was a little bit tentative, didn't take the chances I should have when I had them. Um, but I suppose I had two heats to in and really happy. And biggest thanks must go to the team and all the sponsors. My dad and Peter work gave me a really a really, really good bike for this year and thank you to Kawasaki, to Red Square and to Bridgestone for all their continued support and to my sponsors, to Stefanuti Stocks. Um, thanks guys, without you it wouldn't have been possible. Uh, Motel, EK Chains, thank you very much to everybody and stay really happy to have won again. The Red Square ZX10 rider of the day does go to Gareth Jackson. Listen, it was um, it was a little bit harder than I, than I thought it would be. Race one was kind of you had to stick to the same lines so you were limited a lot of the time 
but um, it was, uh, you know, it was getting past the Oaks in this class is extremely difficult. So it's, you know, it's, um, it's an achievement when you can get past any one of these guys at the moment. Race two was a little bit, uh, my times were a little bit quicker, um, but I uh, slowed back a little bit at the end, you know, a little bit of fatigue. Uh, the track was a little bit warmer as well, so I think uh, my age catches up to me every now and then. A panaganapathy on the warm-up lap in race number one apparently didn't have enough fuel in his bike. If you're going to do it, do it on the warm-up lap, eh? So I had to come in, fill fuel, and only got uh, five laps in after that. <laughs> but uh, race two was quite good. Uh, had an okay start. Uh, two guys, Teddy and JLR, did come past me. And uh, Hink passed me into turn three, and then had to try to get back past him, and then uh, rode pretty much on my own for the rest of the race, but uh, had a good race. And I feel late came on after I just finished, which is probably the right time it should come on. <laughs> Don't ever forget that fuel down to the TRP podium. Graham from Idar, your new champion on the top step. Yakukos in second place there. Michael Smith in third place. What a season it has been. Remember to join us for the finale down at Aldous Grabanti in Port Elizabeth on the 16th of November. The ZX10 Masters Cup action is proudly brought to you by Red Square for ultimate activation.